program, this is the test program for milestone two. As you see, the test program could have been only one line. I just did this to kind of give you, uh, so you're, you're parking, you're creating a class called parking. Essentially, essentially, what you're doing over here is to create your final, pro, final milestone but only the skeleton of it, the mock-up of it. So this is the mock-up of your parking application. What I'm asking you to do to create kind of empty functions that they don't do functionalities and call them based on the menu. Very simple and straightforward. So you have only one public function that is called run. The rest of them are all private. Of course, you have constructor and destructor too, but all the member functions are all private, okay? If you feel you need to add any more functions, as usual, please do so. If you think any more things are needed to be added, any more properties, do so. But let's see what actually the, uh, the project is supposed to do, like what, you are create, what you're supposed to create. This is essentially what, when the program runs, this is how it's going to happen. There are two zeros over here that I'm going to remove. It's not in the, in the main program. I'm not, it wasn't necessary to test it, so I didn't print it. I just, in the other class, I put it away to show you what run returns. But anyways, so essentially, I'm creating two invalid runs, two invalid parkings, and one valid parking. So the first two that you see over there, error in a data file, error in a data file, those are the two bad parkings that when you run, it does nothing. It just prints error in a data file. I'll explain to you later on what it is. And then the menu comes in. Essentially, testing the menu is this. The first one is a, has a submenu. So when I click, uh, when I enter one, it says car, motorcycle, or cancel. And then I'm going to say one again. All I do is to print parking car. That's all. Then one, two this time, motorcycle, parking motorcycle. Then one, three this time, canceled parking. And then I'm going to, this was one, because it has a sub menu. I did one, 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 two, and one, three. Now I'll do two, three, four, and five. So then it's going to be two. It's going to say returning vehicle, three. It's going to say uh, listing park vehicles, four. It's going to say closing parking. And that uh, at sign that you see, because closing parking terminates the run function. So I'm calling it again to test five. That's the second time the run is calling, and you only say five. And this is probably the only function that you are going to develop something in it. And that's exit program. So when I say five, you say this will terminate the program. Are you sure? Yes or no? So first you do ABC to show that you actually detect invalid response, yes or no are acceptable. Then yes, still not acceptable. No, still not acceptable. Lowercase y, it is acceptable and it goes out. That's it. That's all you program. Finished. So you are essentially building a, building a mock-up of the, of the project, what it's going to be at the end. And throughout the next milestones, you're going to build classes that is going to be used in every function. So I'm going to tell you to do park vehicle function, you do this. Then you use all the classes that you're going to create in milestone two, three, and four. Two and, uh, milestone, sorry, three and four. Sorry, three, four, five. Three, four, five, and the last one is your project, okay? So essentially, in milestone uh, three, you are going to create one class, and it's only one day for it, because it's uh, an abstract-based class. It's a very simple class. In milestone three, you are going to create a vehicle class, like you have done in here, for your uh, uh, um, workshop, but a slightly, um, not slightly, very different, <laughs> OK? Uh, the abstraction of that vehicle is parking. In here, it's speed limit. That one is parking, so the abstraction is completely different. So in milestone uh, uh, four, you're going to create the vehicle. In milestone five, you're going to create two classes out of vehicle. One is car, one is motorcycle. 
and you're done. Now you can actually fill the thing. And <clears throat> so each one of them is going to be four or five days. There are, there are not much of programming to be done. Like milestone, like for uh, um, vehicle, probably you have like 70, 80 lines of code to write. It, there, none of these, this is how object orientation is. It's more design, less coding. Okay? So you got to see that there, and there's not much coding over there. And <clears throat> if you just get at it, you got to be done. So um, as you noticed, 4 and 5, they both exit the program. If you look at it, in here I'm calling run, and it exit, and I'm calling run again. That's when, in here, I had this closing parking, and it actually exited the run. And then it, I ran it again to see if, it, if your second exit works. So what's the difference? Why I have two exits? What, what is the difference between closing the parking and terminating the program? Closing a parking is an end of day action. If you've been in a store, worked in a, in a store or anything, there's an end of day report where you actually close down the store and you see how much you've made and stuff like that. In a parking, when it's not overnight par parking, end of day essentially means if there is any parking le uh, car left in a parking, you know, you've got to call the towing company to come and take them. And then you close down the parking. That's number four. So when number four is done, it takes all the cars out, close down the parking, program ends. Number five is to exit the program, not closing down the parking, which means you want to go for lunch, you close, you turn off your computer, go for lunch, come back. You want to turn on the program, and you want all the data to still be there. You want all the car information, everything, all the parking. So that's what it's going to do. <clears throat> Four clears the parking, deletes everything in a, in a data file, and exits. Five saves all the current information in a data file. So next time you run it, it will bring everything back in. So your parking will be exactly as, it, as you left it off, which means you can run the program again, and the car that it was in spot two, spot two, it's still in spot two. Okay, and everything works as if the program was not terminated. So number five is a pause in execution. Number four is closing down the parking. And that's where the file thing is going to come in. That's the last milestone. Essentially, what I'm mentioning here is all that. So parking module is this kind of thing, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go through that. We went through it. This is the, the parking, the, the uh, main uh, uh, menu that is going to, that, that's going to be shown that you saw it. And this is the sub menu when only the first one is selected. What type of a thing you want to park. <clears throat> and for now, yes. How do you print it? See out. What do you mean? No, no, I'm not saying to print anything in red. Oh, I'm specifying. That was a cool one. I liked it. I liked it. So for now, print the following messages. I'm saying so what you see in green is user selection. What you see in red is what you're supposed to print. And thank you for the question. That is, that, that could, it, could be, it could be interpreted that way. Thank you for the question. Yeah, so, so whatever you see in green is what the user selects in the menu. Whatever you see in red is exactly what you're supposed to print. OK? But thank you for the question. OK, so, so uh, if user selects park vehicle car, you print parking car. If user selects this, so you see exactly what's going on. That's all you do, nothing else. The only thing that you are actually, there are two places that you're writing if statements and stuff, but the one that you're actually write a program in it, it's the exit program. So you're going to actually print this will terminate, wait for user response. So if I were you, I would write a function called yes that returns true or false if the user actually enters yes, and put it in utils and use that one. Because there may be other yes and no's you need to use, you may want to reuse it, use that one, <clears throat> and make it act this way so you can recall it whenever you want. That's a good idea to use. But again, it's your choice. All the function names, except, for, except, uh, from two, except uh, two of them, 
are your choice. You will see. I'm not mentioning what is the name of the function. You have to name it yourself. So come up with sensible names, okay? Don't put bad names. Don't put three-letter names. Like if I'm saying save data file, don't call it SDF, okay? Put a name that it actually explains what's happening. So to accomplish the above, you do this. So what happens is that, so essentially at the top, I'm, the overview, I'm telling you how the program gets executed. These are the things that I want you to create, okay? First, minimum of three properties are needed for parking that you are to going to create. And they're all, you've already done it. The first one is a string, C string, you do dynamically and you keep the data file name in it. And it gets initialized and it gets set, sorry, to the value of the data file that is coming from the constructor. So you see the constructor receives a data file name, you measure what is its size, you do a dynamic memory allocation, you copy it over, you did it 10, 10 times. Do it again. So the name of the file, data file, that the parking is supposed to save its information in it is in a dynamic C, uh, C style string. And then you have two more properties, two more variables but compound types, which means those two, one of them is a main parking menu, and the second one is the submenu. These are the other two. So you create two instances of menu that you created in milestone one. One is for the main menu that you're going to display. Second, second one is the sub menu that you're gonna display when the first option of menu is selected. That's it. <clears throat> and the values you're gonna have, the first menu, the main menu indentation is zero. Uh, uh, the title is parking menu, select an option, and the options that menu items are parking, park vehicle, return vehicle, list park vehicle, close parking, end of day, and exit program. For the menu select, uh, vehicle selection menu, uh, you have indentation set to one, uh, data uh, select type of the vehicle is the main menu, and car and motorcycle and cancel are the menu items. Was that a question over there? No? Okay. You can add other property properties if and when you need. Your choice, okay? I don't know if you want it or not. If you can accomplish whatever you have with what you have, fine. Otherwise, if you want to add something else, by all means, you're free to do so. <clears throat> One important thing over here that I mentioned that I want to uh, uh, talk about it, read the whole document before starting to implement the milestone. Because when I'm it was chicken and the egg. If I want to explain how to write the constructor, I had to explain, I had to tell you these functions are called in a constructor, but I'm not explaining what those functions are yet. So when you see the constructor explanation, it says call this function and that function, but you don't know what they are. They are explained later. That's why. Read the whole thing and then go back and start doing it. <clears throat> so constructor implementation. So parking can be created by a constant C style string, which is essentially the name of the file that you pass. Usual thing, if that thing is null or it's an empty string, you set the parking to an invalid empty state. When parking, when the parking goes to an invalid empty state, it becomes disabled, which means run function is not going to work anymore. Remember that. So if your function is in uh, an invalid empty state is essentially like C out. When it fails, you have to clear it. Well, we don't have a clear function for this. If the function, if the parking fails, quit the program, call the system administrator to come and talk to the developer and tell you what's wrong with it. <clears throat> the parking should work. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You cannot set an opt, you cannot set a parking back to a non-empty state. If, if in any case it goes to an empty state, it failed. It shouldn't run. <clears throat> so after you do the dynamic memory allocation, you call the load data file function. See list of up, uh, members below to see what it is. If it returns true, populate the parking vehicle menu. So essentially you create, a <clears throat> you, you create your as attributes, you create the parking menu and the sub-menu in the properties, right? 
in the constructor, you have to populate it with menu items. You do that only if load actually worked properly. Okay? So if load doesn't work properly, then uh, you don't even populate anything. You only print error in data file and you get out. Okay? And you set the class into an invalid empty state. The destructor calls the save data, save data file function, and then he allocates the memory for the file name and it's done. Okay? That's a destructor. Now, what are the member functions? And they're all private. Is empty. Returns true if it's in an empty state or false if it's not. Parking status function. It doesn't receive or return anything. It just prints Seneca valet parking and goes to new line. That's it. Park vehicle function. This function displays the sub menu, receives the user selection, and prints those values accordingly. So all it does, all the park menu vehicle function does, it displays the sub menu, which means it says uh, select whatever the title is, you've seen it up there. And then if user selects one, it prints parking car. If user selects two, it prints uh, parking motorcycle. If youth uses pre uh, presses three, it prints cancel. And that's it. That's all it does. <clears throat> that's it. Return vehicle, it doesn't get or anything, it just prints this. List parking, just prints this. Close parking, prints this and th returns true. It's a Boolean function. It always returns true. Why? Because it's a mock-up. Later on, you're going to design it so it returns true or false based on closing the parking. But for now, we are not there yet. We just create a mock-up for it, just for it to print the message so we can see how it's going to work out. This is how you develop a real application. You create your interface, it's all garbage. And then you show it to the client. Do you like the way interface works? The client says yes, then you start implementing. You don't imp implement the whole thing and then user says, the client says, I don't like it. Then you have to go back and read. So first you create a mock-up of the system. This is the mock-up of the system that you are creating. <clears throat> so exit parking application, oh sorry, close parking and does that. Exit parking application, exit, uh, uh, exit parking app function, what it does, it does exactly what, what you expect it to do. So it says this will terminate the thing, press yes or no. If user presses yes, it returns true. If user presses no, it returns false. Uh, and if user pr uh, enters anything that is not acceptable, it's going to make sure it's foolproof, as you saw. OK? So only Y and N, lowercase or uppercase, are acceptable. Load data function does not receive anything or return a Boolean. Uh, it says loading data from and uh, uh, returns a true value, and that's it. But uh, in load data, you only have one if statement, which is you have to check if the file is already in a safe, uh, if the parking is in a uh, safe empty state, you return false. Okay, you don't do anything. Okay, you simply say error in data file or whatever. You'll, you'll see what happens. So load, <clears throat> load data file checks the empty state. If it's not in an empty state, it load, prints load data from and then shows the file name that it just got from constructor and returns true. If it is in a safe empty state, it just returns false. That's it. Save that saved uh, data file, checks to see if it's in an empty state. If it's in empty state, it doesn't do anything. If it's not in an empty state, it prints saves data into saving data into the file name. One if statement. <clears throat> and this is the only program that you are writing, and one public program, one public function, the run public method function implementation. <clears throat> And that's what I want it to be. That's why I put the actual signature for it. That's what it's supposed to be. It should be run, lowercase, 
int returning int, okay? What it does, so essentially how it works is explained in the preview. You know how it works, okay? But logically how it works, this is what it is. So it's run only, uh, um, so essentially uh, uh, what happens is that if the parking is not in an invalid empty state, run works. Otherwise, it just returns, uh, returns one. So all the things that run do, does, it does only if, it's, if the object is not invalid. It's object in a, in a usable state. The run function calls the parking status function. I explained what it does. Then displays the main menu and waits for user response. If user enters one or two or three, it calls the park vehicle or return vehicle or list, par list parking vehicle functions, one of those three, depending on one or two or three. And then goes back to A again, shows the status, displays the, uh, the menu again. If four is selected, close parking is called and, and exits the, uh, the menu, exits the run if uh, load uh, data is returning true, which is always returning true, so you're going to do it. And if five is selected, exit parking gap is uh, called, and exit if it returns true, and will not exit if it returns false. As simple as that. Uh, so it tells you exactly how it works. And when run exits, when you are exiting from run, you cannot have three return statements. You have only one point of exit. And that one point of exit returns one if the object is invalid and returns zero if object was valid. One of these two. Okay? <clears throat> so, and you can simply, if you have an is empty function that returns Boolean, just cast it to an integer and return it. You're fine. All right? That's it. That's the whole thing, and you don't need to do anything else. I'm losing my voice. Uh, in here, I'm explaining the difference between 4 and 5 that I already mentioned. The due date over here mentions where it is. I did not create the script, so you cannot do dash do yet. Uh, I'm going to set it up, and then you'll see how it works. Uh, submission works exactly like the other one. Remember, milestone 3 is going to be only one day. Okay? So, so get ready for it. It's, so it's going to be due at 18th. Okay? Eight of end, eight of, end of 18th. I'm going to uh, set it up and let you know. Uh, no, much more than that. 13, 70, uh, five days. Five days. Five. Oh, this milestone, if, you, if you're done with milestone one, it shouldn't take you more than two hours to do it. Because it's, it, it, it's all empty functions you are writing. It's only one run function you are writing that is a loop you have done in IPC 144. So there is no fancy stuff here happening. Okay? If you have done a menu in IPC 144, you're good to go. It's the same thing. Okay? All right. So let me stop. Any questions before I end the recording? Any questions? And probably I'm going to put this recording on the project itself so everybody can see. Are we good? Yes, yes, I'll post that one too. I'll post that one too. And all the lectures that we're going to have, all the lectures that, are, let me stop the recording.